Got it. Okay, so imagine this. You walk into school on the first day of class, and you look around, and there's no seats. You're looking at your schedule, and you're looking at your teacher, and he just tells you, there's no seats, you're going to have to stand in the back. So I would know, because this happened to me, uh, you should listen to me if you don't want this to happen to you or um, your kids, your friends. Um, so my proposition is Proposition 51. It's $9 billion in school bonds, so that would be going to the construction of schools and facilities. Um, so I would know because I move school districts and now I have more accommodations like a desk, um, technology, um, parking. Um, so the three things I'll be talking to you guys about today is the economic impacts it has, um, the impact that it has on current school facility programs, and the last thing I'll be talking to you about is the access that it brings to a quality education. Okay, so the first thing I'll be talking to you guys about is the economic impact. So it's $9 billion, and how this is split up is $6 billion would be going to K-12, $1 billion to charter schools, which is private schools, and then $2 billion would be going to community colleges. So how would we pay this off? It would take us 35 years to pay this off. It would accumulate 5% interest every single year. We would be paying $500 million every single year. So by the time we pay it off, it would be $17.6 billion. That's almost a double what the bond is proposing. Um, since 2001, we have approved over $146 billion in local and state school bonds. So not only would this increase the state that, that we already have, um, it would completely take away the control from local communities. So right now, um, if you go for your uh, local, if you vote locally, um, you can choose on your ballot where you want your money to be spent in your local neighborhood, as opposed to the state where it's just 100% state. Um, so the second thing I'll be talking to you about is um, the impact that it has on current school facility programs. So what that is, is how schools are currently funded right now. So um, K through 12 currently takes up the largest part in K through 12, I mean, uh, the California state budget. So it's 43% and it's the largest. So it's all to education. So the way local districts are funded, it all depends on poverty. It depends on family size, income, um, English learners, and special needs. So local districts could receive um, up to an extra 20% per student with special needs. That's called supplemental funding. Um, so what this would do is um, Proposition 51, the, it would go to schools first in line. So basically that means it would be going to wealthier schools and they would be receiving the largest portion of it. Um, so how that means is if you live in a low income area, your funding will be low income. If you live in a higher, wealthier area, the income for your funding will be like way higher, you will have nicer schools, um, you'll have like technology in your schools. Um, so what that means is that voters would not be able to control where this money goes. Um, and um, according to Dan Kaplan, he's a fiscal and policy analysis uh, from the Legal Analysis Office in 2016, um, states currently contribute 50% to um, purchasing of lands, construction costs, and um, basically all the construction. So, um, the last thing I'll be talking to you about is um, the access that it brings to a quality education. So by quality education, what that means is um, like having desks, um, having uh, classrooms that meet health and safety standards, having the proper technology um, to learn. So, um, According to Molly Stitt, she's an education consultant at the California Department of Education. Um, Low-income areas that um, change their spending from lower to like about 20% higher than they usually spend, they saw an increase in 30% in graduation rates. Um, so also according to Jeffrey Vincent, he is um, a, the director of cities and schools at UC Berkeley. In 2015, um, he said that there's a clear relationship between um, classroom conditions and student performance. So also according to the California Department of Education, um, by improving safety and health standards of classrooms, um, students can increase their performance on tests like California State Testing, SATs, etc. Um, also, community colleges is a little bit different. Um, they get funded straight through their chancellors, so the chancellor gets to pick and choose exactly what they feel is necessary for their district. 
So by providing money for our community colleges, we could create um, more classrooms, more parking, um, and it would, by providing community college education to students, it alleviates thousands of dollars in debt for us for, to not be going to state universities. Um, and in vocational schools, which is private schools, they could just upgrade their classrooms. I don't think they really need it since they're already private school. So I just talked to you about the three important aspects of Proposition 51. I talked to you about the economic impact that it has. I talked to you guys about the impact that it has on current school facility programs. And I talked to you guys about the access that it brings to quality education. And um, you guys should make your own decision if you guys don't have to deal with parking, um, some good classrooms, and a good education.